A lot of people claim that there are no good video game movies. People have been saying this for years, but as games offer a wellspring of creativity with inbuilt franchises that the movie industry is desperate to tap into, we've seen time and time again that the formats of storytelling that are best served by the interactive medium are not the same as the ones that work best on the silver screen. The movies that do succeed are often those whose storylines deviate significantly from their source material. It seems as though the best directors and producers can do is hope to capture the spirit of the franchise whilst scrubbing much of the detail. But to claim that there are no good video game movies is to ignore the fact that there are popular video game movies. Somehow, despite sitting with an abysmal 20% average on the movie critic aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, the 2001 adaptation Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, has stood the test of time and retains a strong fan base to this day. Whilst critics decried this Indiana Jones knockoff, audiences reacted far more warmly to the film, largely thanks to the standout performance of its leading lady. Angelina Jolie had a pretty thankless task before her when she accepted to do this film. Through the late 1990s, Core Design's heroine was making a name for herself as the leading lady of gaming. A fact that nobody could ignore thanks to her unique character design proportions. In the many years since this movie came out, there have been several iterations of Lara, each growing more and more realistic as the years have progressed. But when Jo Lee was presented with the character, all she had to base herself off was the original buxom British bombshell. That said, it wasn't the bra size that intimidated her at first. A bodysuit and some padding could give her whatever figure she desired. But the amount of stunt work that would be required and the impact that fronting a movie of this magnitude would have on her mental health. Angelina Jolie was probably on the point of mainstream recognition before starring in Tomb Raider. Having won Golden Globes for her performances in television shows, she'd picked up bit parts in a range of movies leading up to the 2000 summer blockbuster Gone in 60 Seconds. However, she had never seen herself as an action movie star, and the script put to her involved a lot of stunt work leading to her to initially turn down the role. Director Simon West, fresh off the 1997 mega hit Con Air, promised her opportunities to travel the world and get direct training from the British military. She was promised a full three months of preparation to get herself in shape, both physically and mentally for the role. But the mental preparation was going to be a problem. Whilst Simon West was convinced she was the perfect face for the movie, Studios were concerned about her. Whilst her acting credentials were strong, Angelina had built up a bit of a reputation as a bad girl behind the scenes. She'd had an awkward childhood after her father, John Voigt, had walked out on her family when she was just one year old. And through her teenage years, she struggled with insomnia, eating disorders, and a lot of different types of drugs. She spoke publicly to the press about her sadomasochistic tendencies, leading to questions about her suitability to be the face of a proposed $115 million movie. Worse, both her father and family friend Jane Fonda contacted the studio producer to voice their concerns about how fragile she was. But Angelina by this time was committed to the role and suggested the idea of getting daily drug tests to ensure she kept herself clean. Simon West claimed that her storied life was actually what had made her attractive to the role. In the video games, Lara Croft was a badass, and the actress taking the part should have all of those same qualities. As far as he was concerned, all Jolie needed was some help adopting some form of British accent. The studio agreed, and they even organised mental counselling to ensure the strain of leading the production of the movie wouldn't damage her. Presumably, the counselling worked, as she agreed at some point to have her real life father, a man that she hadn't spoken to for years, join the cast to play Lara's fictional absentee father, Lord Richard Croft in the movie. Jolie and Voigt reconciled briefly, for long enough to work on the movie to complete, before going their separate ways. The film's remaining cast was comfortably rounded out by Chris Barry and Noah Taylor to flesh out Lara's house staff, Ian Glenn and Julian Rin Tut as her antagonists, and Daniel Craig as a rival anti-hero. These are all fantastic actors, some of whom have gone on to star in some amazing productions in their own right. What's interesting is that save for the presence of a butler who had appeared in the previous games, although in a very different form, 
Much of the specifics of the film were newly created for the movie. The entire subplot of Lara's estranged father was created specifically for this film, as was the live-in tech enthusiast Bryce. However, a few years later when Crystal Dynamics inherited the franchise off of core design, they would incorporate and work both ideas into future video games. The movie, in its set pieces, does borrow some concepts from the previous Tomb Raider games, specifically the home invasion at the end of Tomb Raider 2, and the temple in Cambodia and the end destination of Siberia featuring heavily in Tomb Raider 3. However, the concept of the Illuminati is entirely unique to this film as far as Tomb Raider is concerned. As an adaptation of the video games, it's an outright failure in every respect, save Lara Croft herself. As a movie, it's a cheap, set-piece driven, popcorn guzzling adventure film that doesn't demand anything from its audience. Yet, if that's what you want in a movie, that's absolutely fine. It's perfectly watchable. It looks good. It sounds good. It has no glaring errors or problems. It's just fine. It's the early 2000s in a nutshell, both in look, feel and the soundtrack choices which, in retrospect 20 years later, are just bizarre. Yes, the Illuminati plot is incredibly contrived, but the movie leans into that. Rather than the thrill of exploring expansive, mysterious tombs, the movie leans into the other aspects of the games, which are puzzles, traps and battles against ancient mythical monsters. The CGI is typical early millennium fare, and has aged as all movies of the era have, but the practical effects still hold their weight to this day. There is brief fun spectacle in the tombs, but nothing more. So the audience's patience with this film will largely rest on how engaging they find the main cast. And Tomb Raider did exactly what it promised to do. Angelina got to travel the world. She spent a lot of time in Cambodia, where she became extremely interested in worldwide politics, leading her to return to the country years later in a humanitarian role as a UNICEF and UN envoy. Tomb Raider was a box office success that doubled its budget just in the returns alone, and turned her from a rising actress into a mainline star. The sequel was greenlit and produced, designed to be released closely alongside the next video game in the franchise that was going to be the first outing on the next generation video game console, the PlayStation 2. But that would be another story. 